is the Red Sox offense fixable? There are a lot of questions that certainly have to be answered as the team continues to have an up and down season offensively. You are locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every day, as hard and difficult as it may be right now with this roller coaster of a season that the team is having. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast, here for you Monday through Friday to talk all things Red Sox, whether it's a venting session or celebrating the very, very sporadic good moments that the team is having this season. This episode is brought to you by Eboda. Eboda gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Right now, Eboda is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Eboda by downloading the free Eboda app and using code MLB. Welcome to another episode of the show. It's definitely a very frustrating season to say the least. On this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the offense. Is it fixable? Is this a reoccurring thing that we don't have answers for and that can't be fixed? Or what's really going on there? I'm also going to be touching upon a core thing and theme that might be going on with this team is do they truly have a team leader right now? And finally, I'm going to be doing a fun little segment on why I believe that the Red Sox will seriously pursue Shohei Otani in the offseason when he becomes a free agent. So I need to take you all the way back to Thursday night for a minute. Bayo on the mound, the Red Sox ace at this point. I believe he's done enough to truly prove that he is the ace. Having a fantastic performance takes a no-hitter into the eighth inning gives up a couple hits, gets pulled from the game. And then when Kowski comes in, it gives up a couple runs. And, you know, those runs are charged to Bayo, which is super unfortunate. And I could just see in his face when that first Marlins run crossed the plate, it was super disappointing for him because it's absolutely maddening that he had the type of outing that he had and he had to take a loss in that outing. It's absolutely disgraceful to me that he had to take a loss in that outing. And it's completely unfair for somebody who put his heart into the mound that night, absolutely carried the team who, by the way, had one hit all throughout the time that he was pitching in that game and couldn't squander more offense until late in the game when it was too late. And it's absolutely so incredibly disappointing to me that this has not been the first time that that has happened. The Red Sox have had multiple instances this season where a pitcher has pitched an absolute gem and their offense can't get behind them and support them with the run support. It takes me right back to Jacob deGrom with the Mets. This is literally Jacob deGrom 2.0 with Brian Bayo here. Honestly, he should have a sit down with deGrom and they could just vent about their non-existent offenses when they are having a start where they give up zero to one run and they take the loss. There is zero, zero reason that Bayo should have a no hitter going through seven innings and pitch into the eighth inning and have to take a loss. That to me is absolutely disgraceful and just says everything you need to know about the Red Sox offense this season. One of the coolest stats about Bayo and another reason why he absolutely is a an ace at this point in his career, he posted a 214 ERA in June, allowing zero home runs. You want to know the last Red Sox pitcher to do that? It's a, a pretty big name here. It's, it's somebody who had a very, very successful career. Roger Clemens in 1986. Last Red Sox player under 25 years old to allow zero home runs and post an ERA that low over a five-start span. I mean, 
the comparisons he's getting, people are comparison comparing Bayo to Pedro. It, it you know, there these are not these are not just names to be taken lightly and just throw out there. He is legitimate and he's somebody who can build the rest of this pitching staff for years to come. You want to build around him as he will be a strong pitcher for you going forward. However, his offense after that series with the Marlins ended and I was so incredibly irked at the fact that they got swept at home again and their numbers against the National League are just absolutely horrendous and that is a conversation for another day. After that Marlins series ended, 11 runs in 7 games, tied for their fewest over a 7 game stretch since 1989. That is a major, major problem. And I've already talked about Peter Fatsy on the show, but I can't emphasize enough again. He needs to go. There needs to be somebody else brought in that's a better offensive mind that can work with the offense on actually improving on their mistakes and elevating the talent that is in here. Every single game, it gets more and more proven that he is a problem. And when it comes to the Red Sox offense in general, you know, is it fixable? We we get to this question of, is it fixable? Can they become more consistent offensively? Or is this just how it's going to be for the rest of the season? No, the answer is no. I don't believe it can be fixed at this point. I think the talent is there. And I really, really hope I'm wrong. And I hope that they can turn things around and be a more consistent offense because that is what it's going to take for them to be taken seriously and actually get a wild card spot. But no, I think if they have Fatsy in there, this offense is unable to improve upon what they've been doing wrong. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of energy on the offensive side of the ball. And I don't know about you, but when I'm watching this team and they're taking these at bats and they're going through the motions, it's literally exactly that to me. It's going through the motions, not having a feel for what pitches to swing at, not really putting in the effort. And by the way, also in that game on Thursday night, such poor execution when they decided to have Connor Wong sacrifice bunt and he popped it up to first base. First of all, why are you having him bunt in that situation when David Hamilton comes in the game to pinch run because the Red Sox got lucky to get a base runner in that inning off of an error and David Hamilton comes in to pinch run and you have Connor Wong um, try to bunt when you have arguably the fastest guy on the team in the game who can easily steal a base. You don't need to bunt in that situation. And then it backfired, probably the worst bunt I've ever seen in my life. And then they didn't even have Hamilton steal a base. What? Why bring him into the game if he's not going to attempt to steal at any point, which could have been huge for momentum. But no, they don't do that either. So there's something going on here with the management of the lineup and Something needs to change, but until that happens, I don't see there being any changes to how the offense approaches their game plan. I believe it's going to be the same wishy-washy. They make you excited and things are, you know, way up top, like you're on top of a mountain. Then it goes back down as if you're falling off that cliff. And every day you wonder what version of the Red Sox offense are we going to get tonight? And that is just not fair emotion wise to put us as fans through and they need to figure something out because that is just absolutely disgraceful to Bayo. And that's just one example of a start that a pitcher has had this season that they've had to sit through their offense, not providing them run support. So the offense, I don't believe is fixable at this point. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that they turn things around and they become more consistent. But even when they have a few games where they're scoring a lot of runs, which we did see recently a stretch where they were putting up a lot of runs, they just go right back into that same mode of not being able to score in games. And it's very, very disturbing and something needs to change or else we're just going to see for the rest of the season this same up-and-down offense, and it's going to be a very, very long next few months progressing through the rest of the 2023 season because this is just ridiculous, and there is just too much talent on the offensive side of the ball for this to be happening. So obviously that means there's something more internal going on, and whatever that is, they need to get to the bottom of it, but I don't feel that they are capable of doing that until Fatsy goes. But we'll see. It's up to the Red Sox to make that decision, not me.
Coming up, we're going to talk about another issue that might be part of all of this, which is, do the Red Sox really have a team leader right now? And if so, who is it? I'm going to touch on all of that coming up next. But this episode is brought to you by Ebota. Picking up burgers and hot dogs for a summer barbecue. I know we all have them in the summer. It's that time of year, 4th of July, long weekend. We're all in the midst of, I'm sure, a lot of barbecues going on. You know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back for it with Ebota? Ebota gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. Right now, Ebota is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ebota by using the code MLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ebota app and use code MLB. That's Ebota in the Google Play or App Store and use code MLB. That's a really, really good deal. $5 just to try it out. And you can save so much money. I spend so much money on groceries. It's kind of crazy, actually. And it's it's just my boyfriend and I. I mean, we we spend so much money weekly on groceries and we shouldn't have to. It's it's so ridiculous. And with inflation right now and just prices going up, I mean, I'm just trying to get bagels at the store here, people. Like, I don't want to be spending, you know, 20 bucks just to get a few bagels for breakfast in the morning. Definitely check it out. It's 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 well worth your time. Who's the team leader on the Red Sox right now? I think that's a pressing question that we all need to look at and ask ourselves. And, you know, I'm not going to dwell too much on him leaving because he is statistic-wise and offensively struggling this season with the Padres, but who isn't? That team has just been such a disappointment so far this year. But Tander Bogarts, he's definitely missed more so now than just his on-field presence. I mean, not to mention the fact that the Red Sox defense has just been really bad in the infield this season, which I've touched on plenty of times. But from a leadership standpoint, he had been the longest tenured Red Sox player. Um, You know, he had won a couple World Series with the team, and he was that guy that the Red Sox looked at as the team leader. He was really good at rallying the clubhouse and you could tell he just had a passion for the game and loved being here. He elevated players like Devers. And I talked about this on a previous show with Devers struggling this season compared to what we usually see from him. Part of that could be because of Bogart's not being here anymore. That was his guy. That was his mentor. They were best friends and it's definitely an absence. And Xander Bogarts being gone, there needed to be somebody who could step up for this team and really be that leader. And so far, I have not seen that from anybody on this team. You can look at it and argue it should be Devers because of the contract that he just got with the team and how he's supposed to be the guy you're going to build the team around for the future. But personality-wise, I'm not convinced that he's capable of really taking on that role of leading everybody in the way that they should be and making everybody better on the field. He needs to focus on himself and focus on performing in those high pressure situations since he has a lot on his plate right now with the fact that so many people are looking at him to produce because he just signed a long-term deal with the team and he's been producing for so much time that he's been here. So it's hard to say that Devers is that guy. Is it Justin Turner? Because he's a veteran who has been around a lot and has been in a lot of stressful and pressure situations with teams that he's been on world series teams included to the point where he should be the guy that's, you know, helping the younger guys out by saying, you know, this is our game. We have to play Red Sox baseball. You have to do what you need to do to lock in. Is he that guy? It's hard to say. I'd say probably not because You know, it's his first year in Boston. He was getting acclimated. He's hitting well. But is he really the guy that the Red Sox are going to look at and say that is our leader right now? Because knowing that he very well could be out the door after this season, it's, it's hard to argue that he is that guy to look at and say, 
you know, he's going to be the leader that can rally this team. Is it Verdugo? Probably not at this point. I do think the Red Sox should give him an extension. I think he deserves it. And he could eventually be that guy. But right now, he does have a lot of heart, and I can see it in the way that he plays. But I don't really see that carrying over to the rest of his teammates. He's locked in, but I do believe he's locked in because he is, you know, trying to secure a longer term situation with the team. He likes being here. He cares about performing well. I genuinely believe all of that. But is he the guy that you look at again and say he is our team leader? Who is that guy? Because honestly, I I feel like, you know, Chris Sale was good at rallying his team, but with all the injuries that he's faced, it's hard for him to really stay focused and motivated and rally other people when he has to focus on his rehab. So with the way that the Chris Sale situation has transcended lately, it can't be him either at this specific moment in time. So who is it really? I think the Red Sox have been trying to find their true identity all season and they haven't been able to really figure out what their identity is. And a lot of that, I believe, is there is nobody who you can really confidently say is the heart and soul from a leadership standpoint right now. I think from a, you know, longevity, this guy's going to be here with us for a while standpoint, Devers is that guy. But you need the personality too. baseball is such a personality driven sport and you need to have the mental capacity and the mental focus to be able to succeed. Do the Red Sox have somebody who can keep them focused like that? I'm really, really, really struggling to find somebody who fits that mold right now. And it could be well worth while for the Red Sox to really hone in on that and figure out who that guy is going to be in the future going forward, because I don't really feel like there's anybody on the current roster who you really look at and say that is the identity and the heart of soul and soul of our team. So that's one of the biggest things that they need to figure out going into this off season is who is that guy? And do they have somebody at the helm who can do that? Do they have the managing that can help, you know, fuel that fire of we trust you and you're the guy to help come through and help rally the team when things are going tough, because when they're in a downswing, who's bringing them back up? I do, it doesn't really seem to be like there is anybody from a camaraderie standpoint. And again, I'm just coming from the view of somebody who watches the games. Obviously, I don't know what happens in the clubhouse, so I can't say for sure that any of this is true. But just from what I've seen, you watch the games just like me. Who is that leader? Who is lifting the team up when they drop five straight games or who's lifting the team up when they get swept by a team or having demoralizing losses that they could have won in games they could have won? Who is helping to get them back on track from a player standpoint? I'm not convinced that anybody is. So that's something they really need to figure out going into this offseason. And you, you know, you need to have somebody who can produce, but also lead the team. Those are the two key things for me. They need to find their identity again. And in the future, I do believe that'll happen. But I think that could be a big explanation for what's going on right now. Coming up, I am going to be talking about a man who is going to be absolutely hot on off the market when he becomes a free agent. He is a double agent. He really does it all. Shohei Otani. Is it a realistic possibility that he comes to the Red Sox in the offseason, or is it just a pipe dream that I just hope for and won't happen? going to touch on it co coming up. Don't forget to check out Locked on Red Sox on your favorite podcast platform for free. Check out the show and leave a review, leave a rating. I always appreciate that. So check it out on your favorite podcast platform. Also check out Locked on MLB. With the MLB draft right around the corner, the Locked on MLB show can provide you with great draft analysis, players to look out for, who the Red Sox might be able to take um, that could be good for the system. I'm sure they will go after short stops again because we all know the Red Sox pattern. But check out Locked on MLB, who can really keep you updated on what's going on around the league and be able to give insight as to who teams might select, what to look for. If you're wondering what the Red Sox 
system could look like, who could fit into that mold. The Locked on MLB show can give you a lot of great insight into that. I know I've enjoyed listening to their show, and they really do give a great overview of everything going on around the league. So if you want to know about teams that the Red Sox have coming up on the schedule that you haven't gotten as much of a chance to follow this season, definitely check them out because they can help provide you with information and analysis on teams that the Red Sox should be able to beat teams that they could struggle against based on matchups. You can get it all unlocked on MLB. So check out the show. Fantastic crew over there. And it's, it's a great show to listen to. So it would definitely be worth your while to download that show and check it out. A man that's a hot topic right now in baseball. He is an all-star, unarguably. He has MLB-level numbers in a variety of categories. He's the most fun player to watch right now, in my opinion, in baseball and could arguably end up being the best player of all time. Eventually, Shohei Otani, he is just – he really does it all. What can't the guy do? from a pitching standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, he really does a lot. From this season, his stats, he has a 302 earned run average, 127 strikeouts. He's given up 12 home runs and 32 earned runs over 16 games pitched. And not to mention his hitting. I mean, from a hitting standpoint, he is hitting so well, hitting 314 with 97 hits and 29 home runs. It's just, it's it's crazy to think about. I mean, 66 RBIs. <laughs> what does he not do? What what does Otani not do? That's the question that everybody asks constantly. And I also am asking that question as well. He's going to be a free agent. I don't believe the Angels re-sign him. I mean, there's just been so much that's gone on with that team and they haven't been able to really prove that they can be a team that can go far in the playoffs with him. So I do think we don't see him in an Angels uniform next season. I think a likely possibility could be the Dodgers because they do have a strong roster and he wouldn't have to leave markets. He could stay in LA where he's used to and feel feels comfortable. And the Dodgers, you know, you know that they have the money to throw a lot at him and offer him a big contract. So I could see him going there. The Mets were a possibility, but who knows what's going to go on with them now because Steve Cohen threw a lot of money at people this past off season. And it obviously hasn't been working for the Mets because they've really, really been scuffling this season. So they might be out. Who knows? I also don't know how Otani would feel about going to the New York market. Um, So those teams I'm looking at as potential possibilities, but the Red Sox would be absolutely dumb to not look into the situation and try to squander a good deal for him. He is the type of player you want to throw money at, and I would be all for bringing him here. He would fill multiple needs. I mean, from a rotation standpoint, imagine a rotation of Bayo, Otani, Whitlock, Houck, and Crawford. Granted, those guys are still growing into their roles, but we've seen the potential from all of them. And I believe they all could be really, really solid starters for the Red Sox going forward. So imagine those five in the rotation, if, you know, Hauk and Whitlock in particular can kind of grow that consistency and Hauk a longevity standpoint of being able to pitch deep into games and Crawford, who's still developing, That's a really, really strong rotation you have right there. So Otani could seriously help solidify that rotation, which they're still working on trying to build. It could make a lot of sense with where the Red Sox are at right now. Sale with his injuries is probably basically done. Paxton, I'm sure, is going to be out the door. I I believe at the trade deadline they try to move him. Um, And then, you know, you have these bullpen games every few days that – people that you're throwing out there. I truly believe Otani fits a major need from a starting pitching standpoint, and he could really be that last piece that you need to say, okay, the Red Sox have a good starting rotation right now. I would love that move. I think it makes a lot of sense. And from a hitting standpoint too, with Justin Turner being 38, I when they signed him, I felt like this was going to be his only year with the Red Sox, and I still believe that's true. He's had a good season I hope they don't move him at the trade deadline. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility, but I hope they don't 
move him just because he's been hitting well and he does fill that DH slash, you know, infield kind of need right now. But with where he's at, Otani could be a huge upgrade to this, you know, lineup. Because if you add him in the mix with hopefully a healthy story and with Devers and then Duran and Casas, who, by the way, need to be playing more. I don't like that Cora has benched them um, a little bit more recently. I think now is the time to give them the exposure and let them develop because they're not going to be able to develop at a consistent pace if they aren't playing and they're not on the field. So why Cora continues to bench them just is confusing to me. I get that every player needs off days, but it's almost like they're just getting more off days than they really need. And especially with where the Red Sox are at now, where they're starting to become more of the team that probably isn't going to contend this year. Those two guys deserve the playing time. And if you want them to develop, they need to continue to play. I think they both have a really high ceiling and they both have potential. So imagine that, like imagine Otani thrown into that mix as the DH, that could be a really, really good offense. And then eventually if, when Marcelo Meyer comes up, throw him into the mix. Oof. Could be a really, really solid team. And this is why I truly believe things need to fall into place. But if the Red Sox get Otani, that feels like to me, things are really falling into place and a lot of the missing pieces in the puzzle are there and you're getting your core of players that you can really continue to build around. If you have that core of the names that I just listed and you can add pieces here and there throughout the season to add to them, to make them a more contending team, that's looking like a really solid team. But to get there, there still needs to be more steps involved, which I've mentioned multiple times already, reworking the coaching staff, shipping off some of the veteran players who have been playing well this year and getting some good return for them to continue to build up that farm system. And then just getting everybody back on track offensively, because this team right now should be playing better offensively. So getting people back on track. But if you add Shohei Otani to the mix, he fills multiple needs. You know, he is going to ask for a lot of money. So I don't want you to be rattled if he goes somewhere for a really high price. And I think the Red Sox could give him a really high price. They are capable of doing it. They should do it. The question is, will they? Will they believe that he's worth it? Like I feel that he is because they would be stupid, in my opinion, to not at least look into the situation. And if they offer him a contract and he comes here and it's a lot of money, just know that where the market is now, you are you have to expect players of his caliber to go for high prices, especially somebody like Otani with what he does on the field and the fact that he can do a lot of different things. It's expected that he's going to end up going somewhere for a really high value. So if the Red Sox get him, then we're looking at a team that I think seriously could be in contention. And I'm not just saying that he fills so many needs and he could be a huge, huge help to a team that is on the cusp and feels close, but just isn't quite there yet. So please bring Otani to the Red Sox. He could fit in really well here. And I would really like the vibes and just, you know, I think he would really enjoy Boston. So please, please, please bring him here. And I know people are talking about Heim Bloom and getting rid of him, but if he pulls off a deal for Otani, that speaks volumes to me about his plan of what he's been trying to do, you know, these last few years, but he needs to make a big splash this off season for me to be really sold on his plan, having a full on direction between that and Marcelo Meyer, who hopefully is going to pan out. If, if those two things can happen with Marcelo Meyer being really good and panning out here and them bringing in an Otani like player, that to me is, is a contending team. So only the future will tell, only time will tell, but there's exciting things on the horizon for the Red Sox if those types of moves are made. So please pray that Otani comes to this team because that would be absolutely amazing. Please, please, please subscribe to Locked on Red Sox, share the show, and 
leave a review, leave a rating, have conversation with me on social media. I know I have my event sessions with people on social media about when the team is not playing well. So continue to do that. Follow me on any social media platforms at Gabby Hurlbut 10 on Twitter at Gabby underscore Hurlbut 10 on Instagram. I will catch you all on the flip side. Go Red Sox. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Take care.